So we're going to start. What do you need? I'll use it later. After we start. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever. I need, I need like power. Yeah, yeah. That's my thought. Okay, hello. Welcome to Game Dev Club. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> My name is Olivia. Now you can say Shoki. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> Somebody joined me. We can, <laughs> we can get more chairs. There's, 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 there's two chairs right there. There's, 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 there's a problem back there. Yeah, fight for them. Yeah. Oh. You have to hold it first like gave me an idea. Me? When I said don't stab me. <laughs> so how many new members do we have here right now? Raise your hand if you're a new member. I don't know if I qualify. Patrick, put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go around and get everyone's names. Hmm? Is this um, going to be like I'm, right? I'm Libio, I'm the secretary, um, I'm the founder every, of the company. Everyone who's a member, is this going to um, be Yeah, I'll probably send an email so, out saying when the video is going to be posted up on the YouTube oh, channel. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Everyone who's so, a member. Yeah, who's on the Say your name, members. your major, and fun fact. So I'm a computer science major. I guess founding the club is a problem. That's boring. Um, you like racing games. I like racing games. I really <laughs> like racing games. <laughs> and nothing else racist. <laughs> wow. Never. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's played, and that's what he does. <laughs> 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 Does. You introduced yourself. You met you today. The man who needs no introductions because he has too many. Yes. <laughs> That's a very specific way of saying it. Yeah. Um, I don't know about a fun fact, but I'm Dylan. I'm the vice president, and I. Um, oh yeah, computer science major. That's a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fun fact, man. Hey, facts are fun. Um, FTL's a cool game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about yourself. That's a thing. I don't know. I've been here since the beginning of the club. That's, okay, that's, that's a thing. Yeah. A founding father. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh. Stop. I have no idea. Well, not that you need it. Yeah. We're going to go around this one. Okay, cool. Mm. I'm Zach. Okay. I'm a computer science major. Just, uh, um, I'm Lauren, I'm a computer science major, and I don't really know, I guess Whoa. I'm crazy is my fun fact, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, you're so over here, but what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Miss Carly, I'm an electrical engineering major, and I played a lot of Dominion on Friday. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> a lot. And Lucio played none. <laughs> <laughs> you awful. So that's a fun fact about Lucio. I didn't even play DDR. I know. You didn't play anything. I played hours. Wait, did this one was? I don't know what. Boy, I don't know what Dominion is. Like, I know it's a game, but what? What game? Uh, it's, it's a card, 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 card game. game. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like a board game, but just cards. Wow. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. Oh, it's really card. Did I say card game? No. <laughs> 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 Maybe play it in a car, yeah. but that's not ideal. Patrick, speed bump audio. All right. Let's see. <laughs> 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 Very big on your face. <laughs> yeah. All right, that works. All right, so hi, I'm Patrick. Uh, I'm let's see the club cinematographer, CS major, and yeah, like playing games. So <laughs> fun fact. Uh. He's better than Lucky. <laughs> Let's see. I'm probably. <laughs> Let's see. Fun fact: I'm a sixth generation Tucsonan. So. Oh wow! Wow! Damn. That's really cool. That's really yeah. Cool. It's only been around for a hundred. It's. it's family. Yeah, like I think, one of my fam, like distant relatives, was like a owned the first saddle shop in Tucson. So. Nice. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on.
George. Okay, I guess I'm the, uh, I'm George being here. Uh, I'm an English literature and film major. So I'm a double major. And a fun fact about me is I have an Arab middle name and I am not Arab. <laughs> I'm, I have no Arab descent. <laughs> Um, I guess he's in his zone, Wait, so... The guy oh, okay, yeah. <coughs> right. So what am I supposed to do? So uh, is this your name? name? I wasn't told to be cameras here. <laughs> but, uh, no, my name is Steve. I'm here from New York. CS is the major with interests in game development. I programmed a couple of my day. So I wanted to see about this place and who's here and what y'all do. Cool. As rumor is, you're one of the more active tech clubs on campus. Me? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm a uh, fine arts major. I'm hopefully hoping to get into uh, what's called illustrations in the visual communications field or VizCon for short and I I think I like to play fighting motion control and uh, adventure Hack and slash or beat em up games like uh, Dynasty, like Dynasty Warriors or God of War. It's a little bit different than something. I'm not sure what happens. You have to think. There's a genre called slashers, so I'm just like pretty much think everything. Okay, and slashing people up. Hi, my name's Grayson. Uh, I'm a computer science major. And I'm a freshman. Um, in 2008, I started uh, making games on a website called Roblox, and it weren't for Roblox, I would have no idea how to code, uh, and I wouldn't be going into computer science either. Um, hi, my name is Moshi. I'm a mechanical engineering major. I'm a freshman here. And fun fact about me is that I was in the same school as this guy in the eighth grade, and this club made us find each other again. Aww. And uh, <laughs> it happens to me that I also started working on a video game project around the same time as he did in 2008 as well. Hello. So that's my story. Hello. Okay, uh, I'm Curtis, I'm the math major, and uh, junior, and uh, I guess what the fact like is that I, I enjoy a lot of uh, space, space flight uh, games. Is fight training combat. Um, my name's Sean. I'm a computer science and math major. And uh, over break, I discovered Dwarf Fortress and lost about four days. <laughs> <laughs> Never get them back. <coughs> now you gained those four days. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taryn. I'm a computer science and math major. My first time here. And I am fourth generation in Jet. Um, so I'm Zooming and we have a community mem community member that I Skype here, so you introduce himself after me. Um, I'm the current president of this club and let's see I'm computer science and maybe math major. And fun fact is I like playing really hard games, so when I make games I make them really hard. And no one can Pass it, either. So, Kobe uh, <laughs> <laughs> Usually I can. Oh, wait, there's this game that I made that I couldn't beat a month afterward. Like, I go back and I'm like, how do you solve this problem? So I just. Yeah, I do it. Anyways. Uh, so we're trying to buy you on this side. Can you still hear me? If it's gone, then we'll just skip it. Well, just shout well, it will you? Well. <laughs> Come back! <laughs> oh. 
God, be that way. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just have to get one. Fun fact about me, uh, I was born in Alaska, uh, nice. Uh, ice. Uh, <laughs> lots of ice, yes. <laughs> interesting things, interesting things. Uh, I've been programming since I was about 13. You don't have to. You can just. Let's pretend that the camera is your parent or your relative or something. Something you like. And you did something very wrong. Or we should just play. And then suddenly you look at the camera and say, Hi, my name is Connor. I want to see you. Thank 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 you. Th
What's the number one phone? Because they like, started restricting. Oh yeah, they did. Hey, so, there's, there's, a, there's a chair over here. Should we make a chair? Hmm? Yes. What's your name? What's your major? And what's your name? Alright, I'm Navi. I just joined this friend. I'm Marcus. I'm from India. I was working with the ASS company. For two years, I kind of have a passion for gaming. I worked on Unity 3 for some games. As for them, so that's that. Cool. Welcome. So, another thing we need to do is add people to the mailing list. On the mailing list. Yeah, let's pass around the sheet. So, if you're, so if you don't get, if you're not on our mailing list, write your email address on the sheet. Try to be legible so that we can read your email address correctly. So we're gonna have a workshop. The workshop can be on the game maker, game maker, or construct. And both of these programs are. Um, hey, it's working. So both of these programs are what we call rapid prototyping tools. They're basically things that you can make games with without knowing how to program. Or if you do know how to program, they can help you make the game really quickly, just so that you can rapidly prototype an idea. And we will probably have another workshop later this semester about game design. Um, we haven't planned that yet. Question? I guess uh, Game Maker or Construct 2. Um, are are they um, programs that we install on our laptops? Yeah, or? and they bo they both have free versions. Like, we can well, get them no, for free. Free trial. Free trial. Yeah, oh. it has a free trial, and after that, it's paid. Okay. No, no, no construct. Okay. Okay. Another question. Yeah, so for the record, I actually uh, worked with Game Maker a lot in the past. So mm -hmm. any help me in the workshop going in terms of uh, yeah, making it work, I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. Rusty, I haven't touched it in a while, but it's an excellent interface. I recommend, I recommend yeah. it. It would be great if you could help. So zooming is like the other Game Maker Pro user here. I said I'd use Game Maker Pro. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dave? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Um, no, I personally it's... don't like Game Maker that much, and that's why I don't know that much about it. Uh, but I still know enough. Okay. Uh, so let's do the vote. Oh, so. Uh, I just, so who here has used Game can... Maker or has a copy of Game Maker? Like, there, were, there was a week in December when Game Maker was created. Anyone here get it? <laughs> I did, oh, you did, but it seemed quite difficult to use, so I yeah, that's what the one shot. Um, yeah. Okay, so does anyone here? Okay, so who here prefers, or who here has a preference in terms of game maker versus construct? Construct. Construct. Because of our YouTube <laughs> <laughs> We need more. I mean. <laughs> Uh, so that was the time lapse, and when was it? Two, it was two, two semesters ago. ago. Yeah, when we, we recorded a meeting, and it was about Construct 2, Will called it, the guy in the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we uploaded the video, our video got like tons of hits, for some reason. <laughs> uh, I mean, I prefer to I would like to learn something new. <laughs> yeah, me too. Can I make some yeah. So. There are any differences between that? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Game Maker is older, <laughs> and Construct 2 is newer, which means it probably has a lot more um, design work put into it, whereas Game Maker is kind of just trying to keep itself back with compatible with the earlier versions. Not necessarily. The newest versions of Game Maker are not compatible with the older versions. Oh, really? Yeah. <coughs> if it wasn't for that, it would look like it. Uh, how long does the free trial last 
for Game Maker and Construct 2? For Game Maker, you get a light version that you have to register for Construct. I don't know how long. A month. Well, my kids, I think it would be better to teach the one that we can just have. Yeah. Rather than teach us one that we're not going to have again in a month. <laughs> well, the thing is, so Game Maker, the free version is very limited. So you can only have like 100, I think it's 100, right? 100. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's what it is. It's, yeah, so it's really limited. And like, but if you have the paid version, it's not that limited. But you end up having to pay for the first one. So you can choose which one do you want to do. Yeah. How much would I have to pay for the paid version? Sometimes they have sales. Studio is usually 50 for Game Maker. I can also do yeah, Construct. Like it's about as much as the top three. Or yeah, probably like five, six, seven, eight. So, is there anyone else who didn't get a chance to send us their mailing list? Yeah, I thought you were Is it a different list there? Yeah, so we used to so have we, email about you. Yeah, we used to have, a, and we also used to have like a Google groups that we tried to do. Oh yeah, that was like the first yeah, message. Yeah, I actually do need to send you this. It's not up anyway. We'll just get email stuff. I may accidentally <laughs> I delete myself at the end of the semester, so. <laughs> Well, it turns it was either a draw or okay. a box. I think I remember something about that. You might have sorted it out. Yeah, but I was so really tired that it. day. Um, <laughs> So, those of you who just came in, and you, you haven't introduced yourself. <coughs> so we, we went around the room and said, what's your name, what's your major, and what's the fun fact? That uh, means you, Rory. Uh, me? Yeah. I go, I go now? Sure. <laughs> All right, I'm Rory. I graduated a year and a half ago. I just kind of wanted to be here. I majored in computer engineering. Um, took me 40 minutes to ride my bike here. Um, at one point, I was the treasurer of the Game Dev Club, the treasurer of HKN, and the president of IEEE. That was a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so was, I'm looking at the Wait, class. Wait, there's another one. Yeah, I guess. Kind of like so, well, so I'm Alex. I, I just got out of class over there, and I saw you guys were having a meeting, so I thought I would come check it out. Alex. I'm from engineering. Or at least that was uh, I don't know if I have a fun fact. Uh, I cooked a I cooked a cow head over the summer. That's just that awesome. It's very greasy. Was it okay, so there's two pieces of uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. There's two. Yeah. So I'm looking at the Construct 2 3 edition, and it looks like they don't have a time limit anymore, but they do restrict your usage, kind of like they make it does. So now it's pretty much a time scale for the people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty So how can you decide to construct two? Well. Well? Does anyone here know construct, construct two? Here. I think Jordan might know a little bit. Oh, those are two really <coughs> good. Okay, it's likely that we're going to do him. Okay. We'll send out more information about this on the email to like a Facebook group and everything. Which we'll send we'll send information about a Facebook group too. Also <laughs> so we're also we, we just had a game night on Friday. And that's what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about DDR and uh, so the game nights are basically, they're usually like once a month or so. We hold them on Fridays. Hey, we hold them on Fridays and we play games all night. Um, we usually bring PC games, console games, board games, all sorts of things. They, they're awesome. So our next game night will, is going to be on the 20th. So Friday. Uh, February, February not 21st. Um, it's going to be at 5.30 here. Starting at 5.30 and it usually ends around midnight. Most people come and go at whatever time is most convenient for them. Yeah, 
I think on Friday we stayed until like 2 30. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> uh, what else do we have for this time? Um, we're going to have a game jam. Does everybody know what a game jam is at this point? No. I've never touched this so much. Not everyone. Just, just I think everyone does. Right. Yeah, no one is, no one like. Who doesn't know? Yeah. Well, it should be, who knows what a game jam is? That's why you don't like. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, who doesn't, then the hands pop out. Just the Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you do. So a game jam is, uh, like, how many hours? Okay. Usually it depends. This semester we're probably going to do a 36 hour one. Um, but not as long. But it's a multi day event where you come in and you join a team and then you try to make a game within the allotted time. Like with, within 48 hours or, or 36 hours, whatever game it is. Um, it's really fun. It's like one of the most fun things that we ever do in the semester. And we do a lot of fun things. <laughs> um, it's a great chance to brush up to practice your programming skills or any other skills that you're interested in, like art and animation or music. Or, or, or to learn something new. Um, it's kind of risky to work on a game with a technology that you're not used to, but it's also crazy in a good way. <laughs> like, you'll, you'll find yourself telling all these stories about all the things that went wrong on your project and how you still had a good time at the end. And there's, it's basically a weekend of free food, if you say. <laughs> um, we're, gonna, we're not sure when the exact date on the game jam is this semester. Um, it's probably going to be the weekend after, or the weekend after that, of uh, spring break. So like, if you imagine spring break, the weekend after we come back, or the weekend after. So pretty much late March, yeah. for people looking at a calendar. Um, so plan ahead, uh, at least as soon as we get a our real uh, date down, you can start telling professors this about many things. It's like, oh, I, I don't want to turn in my time paper doing that because she could. <laughs> <laughs> or just do it really early. <laughs> um, what else we have? GDC. GDC. Oh, the Game Developers Conference. <coughs> I mean, a new color. <laughs> I think the TV's in the way. Or yeah. like that. So GDC is the Game Developer Conference. It's during spring break this year, which is really convenient. There are about eight of us who are going so far, and it's a pretty expensive trip, so we got some funding for it. Uh, it's gonna be really awesome. If, if any of you wanna come, uh, you're gonna have to basically decide to pay for a pass and be able to pay for the additional craft travel costs on your own. But if you come with us, it'll be super fun. Yeah, if there are different pricing options. Like the the cheapest pass is <coughs> not worth it, it's student pass. The next cheapest pass is like a hundred or two hundred dollars, which is pretty good. <coughs> it's I, I think it was a good pass for a first time GDP trip, but I wouldn't take it again. I'll be there for like Five days and for yeah, some classes, you only get three days. How much is the next the summit and tutorials? It's like 300. 300? Summit and tutorials yeah, is like 700 bucks right now. Oh, right now. The indie game summit. Oh, yeah. Which is sold out. Which is sold out. Questions? What is GDC? Like, what do they what do you it's, do there? It's a professional conference for game developers and anyone else who's in the industry. Uh, you get a chance to network with a lot of professionals and attend talks about interesting topics. Uh, the talks are usually very good. Like they, one of the ways that they advertise for GDC is to upload videos of the talks and release some of them up for free. Um, they they have a paid subscription thing where you can just subscribe to like this website that has all the videos of all in the entire conference. But then they release a select few of them for free, and it's really good. Uh, it's, so it's a great way to learn new skills, um, to catch up on what's current in the industry, and just to <coughs> meet a lot of people. Early bird registration ends in five days. I don't know if you already said that. Yeah. I did not know that because we already bought our pet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you say that 
If we want to go, we need to get our own yeah, registrations. So you'll, need, you'll need to buy your own pass because we are we don't have any more funding for more passes at this point. And you'll, ha you'll have to pay for your travel cost to join, to well, come and, with us. And yeah. how much are they? Um, the pass... Depends. Passes is kind of like depends on what you want. I could say right now for travel costs, if you're considering about going with us as a group, it's going to cost you at least 400 bucks for travel. And that's not including food at all while in San Francisco. You got to make it rain, man. <laughs> <laughs> and when is it? It's, in, it's spring break. March so like 17th. March 17th to Yeah, and Friday. our group is planning to leave the 15th. So Saturday the fifteenth, and then we'd be coming back Saturday the twenty second. So. Are you road tripping it? Where yep. Are you yeah. Yep. <laughs> San Francisco. Oh. So we're gonna drive there. What is it? A twelve hour drive? I should know this. I did. thirteen hour yeah. drive. Twelve thirteen hours. Oh, it's twelve if, if you speed. From <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's twelve. It depends time on time how much you adhere to the speed limits. Twelve <laughs> 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 if you speed and don't have. Time. Slash LA traffic. <laughs> We're also going to hold club elections at some point this semester. And that's the last event that I can think of. Questions? How many club officers are seniors this year? One, two, two, four. Yeah, sorry. Three. Well, Tyler's, well, Tyler's not going to have an officer. <laughs> <laughs> You're, You're on the office. He's like the <laughs> pseudo officer. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge me to a duel. Yeah, this song. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's not a stupid video. It's not a stupid video. It's not a stupid video. Yep, that will do it. Okay. So, time for my talk. You can do stuff. Oh, yeah. Ha! Ha! You're here for the game dev? Oh, it's working. I know. Oh. Spiral's like games that triple the officer. Oh, crap. Yeah, well, I'm going to be shouting like I go to the corner. How dare you? Just leave the cap on in the corner. Did everyone see this screen? It's not glaring or anything. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you were like, oh, it's a good line thing. I'm too big. I'm glad I'm going to you. It's <laughs> super comfortable. Okay, so I'm going to talk about transmedia world. Livio, could you yeah. move the camera like a foot, or the, not the camera, the TV to like a foot that way? Oh my god, Don't worry. It's, it's fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. Alright, it should be fine. TV's like a bobblehead, except they didn't work. Is that good? Yeah, you're good. I'm good. Um, where are my speaker notes? <coughs> I need them. Where's my mouse? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm good. So, does anyone here know what a transmitter world is? I think I know something. What would you describe it as? Like, in a brief one sentence description. I mean, just media that goes. <coughs> Continue. That goes through different worlds. There are different means of media. like Yeah, so like a world that exists across several different uh, manifestations of media. So, like a film and a book could share the same world. The same picture of the universe. Um, before talking about transmedia worlds, we kind of have to talk about virtual worlds in general and some of the design ideas that go into them. Um, the first thing you have to think about is get used to the idea of thinking about a virtual world or a fictional universe as being separate from the piece of media that uh, is a representation of it. So, like Star Wars, right here. There's a Star Wars movie, but you can think of Star Wars as the fictional universe as being completely separate from the movie. It kind of exists in its own realm. And there are all these little pieces of media that 
um, add to it or interact with it. So what is Star Wars? <coughs> this is, so I have like three examples of uh, transmedia world and this is my first one. And what I was saying is, er, as I was saying earlier, Star Wars is much more than just a film or a franchise of films. Um, to a lot of people, it means, Star Wars means a lot to them because they kind of grew up with it and it was like the most exciting thing in childhood or something. And <laughs> and yeah, and there's just so many ways to interact with this world. So there's the films, there's the toys, there's the cartoons, and the other cartoons. <laughs> And then the video game, then the video game about the toys. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, wow, Star Wars, I don't know what Star Wars is. It's a cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> Did they make a radio show of it, too? Did they? I think Homer put it, it in the slide. Oh, read the comic books. Oh, we do that. Comic yeah. books. Oh, my God. There's novels, too. Yeah. We can forget yeah. about the Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't yeah. a white thing special? Oh, God. So the... Uh, what was I saying? I had a thought that the Christmas special made me forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you can think of each of these pieces of media as being a gateway into this fictional universe, which is the Star Wars universe. Um, there's even something out there called the expanded universe, which is basically, what, what does it refer to? All the books and stuff that they release, the comic books that tell more stories in this universe than the films do, um, with different characters and everything. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that you can enter the Star Wars universe from any location in, the, in this map of gateways. Like, there are some people who got into it because they played the Lego Star Wars game, and then they learned about the franchise and things from there. Or there are, people, lot, there are probably lots of kids these days who got into it through the Clone Wars TV show. The one that's currently here. I think it's there. Yeah, still there. Um, and there are probably some people who got into the, the video games as well because they were big. Some of them were big hits. So what's so great about Star Wars? Is, it, is anyone here really like a big Star Wars fan or mildly Star Wars fan? Patrick. <laughs> Aren't we all? That's cool. So so what do you like about Star Wars? It's awesome. What's not to like? <laughs> it, it is pretty cool. Lasers. <laughs> so, yeah. Th so what you're saying is like the world. The world is very interesting, like and imaginative. You you have like these people in spaceships traveling the galaxy, fighting with the evil empire. There are like wizards involved and cool-looking spaceships, like really iconic designs. Weird alien species. Robots, some of them can talk. And you have like these weird stormtrooper clone things. Um, and yeah, that's that's a really crazy universe. And it's it looks like something that would be like if you're a kid, you're like, oh man, I want to go and explore this universe. <coughs> like even the film was kind of like about exploring it because it was a basic adventure style story. Um, it's very easy to create your own stories in this world. So like, say you're a kid and you're playing with the toys. It's very easy to imagine yourself in this fictional universe and to generate new stories, and not to be not to be tied down by the story that was told in the films or in any of the books or whatever. Um, and a big important part of this is that the universe is intuitive and easy to understand. You don't have to understand like all these complex rules about how things work. Um, it's not that hard to come up with an idea that sounds like it would be fit well nicely into the universe. And that's these are some principles that make any good transmitter world in general. Because being easy to tell your own stories in a world, that means that the, the world is malleable. You can adjust it to almost anything. Um, which which introduces more uh, opportunities to do more creative things with different gateways. So like the books definitely take a different approach than the films. And same thing with the games in a certain Let me read my notes. <laughs> I try to forget. 
Yeah, and it's also important for it to be intuitive because it lowers the barrier to entry. Um, if you're, if the idea is too complicated, no one's gonna <coughs> really get into it. Um, it's it's also important for like if you have several gateways that are easy to understand, then you're more likely to bring more people into that universe and get them involved. In it. Yeah. Pokemon. So this is my second example. And Pokemon is pretty much the definitive example for uh, for multi transmedia world. And the reason why I say they're the definitive one is because they did so many things really well. <coughs> they probably don't have as many gateways as Star Wars does, but the few that they they have three main ones basically. The one the first one is the game. Pokemon started out as a game on a Game Boy, and this isn't a picture of that game, but it's it's a it's a game. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the the, the, the show, um, the anime, um, and it was crazy popular, and it's still going, I think. Right? Yeah. yeah. The day when Pokemon gets canceled, that's the day. I, I, I can't miss that. That's <laughs> <laughs> the day that Nintendo loses. You can't miss that. That's the day the world dies. Yeah. So then there's a the card game, which was really big several years ago. Is it still big? Not so much. No. It depends. I mean, people have grown up and there's are not play. surrounded by people playing it. But I mean, there's a consistent following. It's just it's still strong. It's a cult still following. Strong. So the card game, um, the show, <coughs> and the video game, they're all very powerful gateways. Like, they're all very well done. And they, they're pretty successful all on their own. And that's really interesting. And they're, they're also very closely tied to each other. Like, with Star Wars, you have this weird dichotomy between the main film and then, like, this thing called the expanded universe. Um, whereas with Pokemon, everything is very closely integrated with itself. And even like just interacting with multiple gateways enhances your experience with the world. Because watching the show actually teaches you strategies about when, when you're playing the game. Or playing, and playing the game gives you a chance to jump into the world of the show. You're like, oh, I, I can imagine myself as a kid traveling the world collecting Pokemon. I'm gonna do it now in this game. <laughs> With no parental help. <laughs> they also use it in like a disbelief sense. Like if you play the games consistently, I remember that I played the games and then I was watching a TV show one time and they were having this dumb thing where this graveler was just like, water, <laughs> whatever. And was just like not super effective. Like, <laughs> which is water just didn't hurt it. And I was like, that is stupid. Like, no, it's <laughs> not okay. Like, screw, the, screw the mechanics. <laughs> they have plot, okay? No, no, I, I'm just saying, like, it's, it yeah, can have totally more of an impact if you're experiencing like multiple things. It's really, I see the anime more as like a specific interpretation of the game. It's just making sure it's dynamic and not turn-based and whatnot, that would kind of be a... But another interesting thing is that when people who aren't familiar with Pokemon see this, they're like, what is Pokemon? Is it a game? Is it a show? Is it a card game? And the answer is yes. All of it. <laughs> um, and that's really interesting. So what's so great about Pokemon? It has this, I call this a strong call for adventure, but it's, it's basically like, imagine if you're a kid and you're like either watching the show or probably watching the show. Um, you you see these kids traveling the world, and it's a it's a family friendly world, <laughs> and like nothing bad happens to these kids. They just have goofy adventures all the time, collecting Pokemon. You're you're gonna be like, wow, that's really cool. I want to travel the world and do all these fun things. Um, and that's a really interesting world to be in. Um, it's Pokemon are the coolest pet you've never had. Uh, Pokemon themselves are just really cool. Like that's the whole premise of the franchise. <coughs> of the uh, yeah franchise. The there are a lot. There are so many Pokemon right now that like, you can find one for whatever your tastes are. Like whether you're into the cute little ones or like the really big <coughs> monstery ones. Um, and so they they have wide appeal. And plus, people like to collect these creatures, and then you can battle them and, or watch them evolve all sorts of stuff. Every gateway is good enough to stand alone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Um, it's the, the strong thing about Pokemon is that it can hook you no matter which gateway you enter it from. Uh, 
you can really say that for some things like Star Wars. Like, in order to really enjoy some of the gateways that they've created for that franchise, you really have to be already invested in the world and already have like all this background. But with Pokemon, when there's three main gateways, they're all very accessible, they have low barrier to entry, and they can, there's still good enough experiences that you can get hooked into the world through those gateways. Then the last example I want to talk to is a failed attempt to create a strong transmitter world by Hot Wheels. Uh, so I, so they started out with this movie of like early 2000s. It was this crazy idea. They're going to release a full length feature <coughs> film or something. Except they didn't release it in theaters. They released it on like a DVD, and they sold like they sold this movie in five parts. And you could like buy a bunch of cars and get a, a part of the DVD. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> they, also, like, they wanted to encourage you to buy every episode of the movie. And then the movie was pretty good. I, I still like the movie. And there are the cars that they sell. So the premise of the World Race was Hot Wheels was having like its 35th anniversary or something. And so they released a line of like 35 cars from like its history. And they gave, they split them up into like five teams, and like this team was scorchers. And then they, they challenged these, they, they kind of like sold it as like, oh, we're gonna sell these things, and you, you wanna collect all 35, right? And I only have like four. <laughs> um, and there, it, it was weird. Everything Hot Wheels did was weird. <laughs> like they sold, the, these cards were more expensive than the normal $1 ones. And they came with like comics, like comics. Uh, and I didn't understand what they were spending all this money for. Uh, and they also had a video game, but it's a licensed title. It's definitely not a, intended to be a gateway in its own. Um, so in, you can see these two as the main two gateways, the, the movie and then the toys. And the movie, uh, this was actually very well done because they thought about how kids play with the toy cards. And they basically created this premise where, first of all, the fictional world is has, is about driving, but they re created this like weird portal thing where these drivers will go through the portal at 300 miles per hour, and they enter this alternate universe thing with the craziest tracks ever. And that that's a really cool premise if you're a kid, especially if you're like me and you like playing with toy cards. Then I remember when I was playing with these. Um, we would just play, like, oh, we're going to go into the portal, and then we're going to have this crazy race from whatever place, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then the, the thing with the Acceleracers logo here is that it turned, they turned, they made a sequel of this, and they tried, they tried again, basically. They tried to make it bigger. And they released four films, except each film was one hour instead of, like, a full film. And so if you put them together, it's, like, four hours or five hours. It's crazy. Um, but th these were also very good films. Like the writing was good, and they had it was, it was very exciting. Um, and they came with cars. And one of the they fixed a lot of the flaws of the old World Race thing. Like first of all, it continued the story of World Race, which was cool. Um, and so I was already invested. <laughs> and uh, but they they didn't they had far fewer characters. Like in the World Race, they had 35 drivers for each of the 35 cars, and that's a ridiculous number of characters and only like a handful of them were important in the movie anyway. Um, but in this, they actually just had a few number of drivers and they each drove several cars over the course of this crazy story. And that's how they did it. And not even all the cars made it in the, into the film, which is interesting <coughs> on Hot part. Um, oh, but then they added a new gateway, a card game. And this card game was pretty cool. Like. But it, it, it did it did, was not successful at all. Like in any measurement of success, it was not successful. Other than it was kind of cool. <laughs> um, and like this was a starter pack that you could buy to play with the cards. Um, first of all, when you buy a, one of the accelerator cards, it came with like three of the card game cards attached to it, which raised up the price and kind of discouraged people from buying them because they're more expensive. Um, and but you never quite had enough cards to play the game, and the only way to play the game with enough cards was to buy the starter pack. But n no one sold the starter pack. No store had it in stock. It's like 
no one wanted to take the bet on her or something. Like they, like Hot Wheels probably came up with this thing and, and then like the retailers didn't buy it. I'm like, nah, we don't think that's gonna sell. We're just not gonna buy it. That's my opinion. So I actually like ordered this online and I thought it was a card. <laughs> I was that invested into this universe. I wanted to get into the card game. <laughs> um, and I have, I have fun with it. Um, so what accelerators did right? It was a powerful fictional world. Like I said, I was, the idea of cars driving these crazy tracks was so cool. Um, it was easy to tell your own stories in it. It got even easier with accelerators because in the, in the world race franchise, they had this premise of, oh, there are five worlds. And even though when you watch the movie, they don't tell you there are five worlds, but if you saw all of their advertisements and all of the products that they're selling, it was very clear that there were only five worlds. Um, but in Accelerators, they came up with this idea that, oh, there are infinite worlds. And, <laughs> and, and so you watch the movie, you never knew what world was next, um, which world they were gonna enter. They went into like maybe 10 or so over the course of this story, um, maybe more. And it, that just made it that much easier to tell your own story. Like you can make up your own crazy world and say, this is the, the glass world where you drive on glass or whatever, where you drive in the sand. <laughs> I'm just imagining myself as a kid driving on windows. Like, yeah. So both the film and the toys were well done. Um, they were very nicely integrated. Um, like they, the animators put a lot of details into getting the cars right, and the cars were also much more detailed than the typical Hot Wheels toys. Hot Wheels cars, which also kind of raised the price. Um, and you also wanted to, you were kind of in, but by breaking it up into teams, you were invested in the team that you liked the most. And so you kind of wanted to get more of each team. And also. The way the story was told, it made you want to get at least one car from every team so you could tell the best story in your little playtime. Um, but what did they do wrong? <coughs> well, the films were hard to find. Like, what is that? So in order to watch these films, you had to either buy them, which was very hard to find. Like, you couldn't find them in stores. Um, I did not find any in the stores. They, they tried to sell, like, they tried to do what World Race did again, where they sold, they broke it up into parts, and they sold you each part in part. But they only sold, like, the first three parts of, like, the first movie. So if you wanted to continue, you never continued it. Um, so the only real way to watch it was to watch it when it aired on Cartoon Network. And it only aired on Cartoon Network once, ever. <laughs> <laughs> it never re-aired. And so what, what we did, we recorded it <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with our old VHS tapes and stuff, back when those were a thing. Um, the, they had this, this weird mini episode thing. Like they were trying to create an episodic experience with this. Um, they, by breaking it up into four films and releasing it in like, very far time spaces. Like in one, the early part of the year, they released one film. Then, like in the end of summer, they released another film. Then, like the December, November, they released another. And, and they had like a, a schedule on their website of when they were going to release these <coughs> and when they were going to air on Cartoon Network. And that's how um, I kept up to date with it. And on that website, they released mini episodes in between it so that the time spaces wouldn't be so long. And those episodes were important to the story. But they were, they were so hard to find. Who's gonna find this website? Unless they were like a super fan <laughs> and were tech savvy at the time. I mean, ki little kids, I don't know. It's just so in, it's not as accessible anymore. And the card game was hard to find, like I mentioned earlier. And I remember um, I, I ended up following a forum that was like a very big accelerator fan community. They weren't very big, but they were very passionate about the world. And they were like old people who like like to collect Hot Wheels cars, and they got into this, this series because they saw their kids watching it. And there was a rumor going around the forum that the reason they they eventually canceled the accelerator, like, so the last movie ended with a, a horrible, horrible cliffhanger. You're like, no, I want to see what happens next, but you never see what happens next because they didn't continue it. 
And the, the rumor was that they didn't continue it because the card game didn't sell well. Hey. And oh, I'm sorry. that was like a horrible rumor because it's like, of course it didn't sell well. I wanted to buy it, but I couldn't because I couldn't find it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's very interesting um, what happened to Hotway in the time of a really strong uh, transmedia world. Um, they, it, it, they kind of ran into problems by working in a space that they weren't used to. Like they were making, they were making films, and they're definitely not into making films, and so they didn't really know how best to release these, and they couldn't try harder or didn't want to invest in making it a full theatrical release, like what Lego is doing right now, the Lego movie. Um, that looks weird. That looks Star Wars. So yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Um, is there ever much incentive to get other people into the <coughs> accelerator when you're playing? Because Pokemon has this trading and battle and thing. It's a social activity, essentially. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rooted in Pokemon. Well, you, if you have friends who are also in problems, you want them, you want to play with their cards. <laughs> but if you have friends who are not, would you like try to convince them to get Maybe. Them like, if you were a super fan, you'd try to convince anyone any, anyway. Just because I, this, this is awesome, you need to try it. <laughs> um, but there wasn't like a built in Maybe that's what the trading card game was trying to do. But it, that, that was just messed up. <laughs> they failed. Yeah? So, like, are we talking about, like, how. Uh, Video games and like information can be integrated into like real life employees and stuff. No, no. transmedia. Where's transmedia? Where's your home buggy to transit to different parts of the media? <laughs> you don't have yeah. a home buggy yeah, to yeah, charge to both of the games. Where's your off toys? Oh, oh, there it is. I'm pressing on the toys. Toys about the games, about the toys. <laughs> Water bottle, I don't know. Trash <laughs> 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 papers in real life. Where's it all in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they missed it. You just gave a talk again. That's one recording. All right. Well, we also had a comic, which was really big oh. in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Was made, yeah. You guys should introduce yourselves. Oh, yeah. You didn't say. So we, did, we went around the room and said our name, major, and fun fact about yourself. Uh, uh, hi. 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 You don't need you don't need to speak Hi. up. We can hear you plenty fine. Are you, are you sure? Are you yes. Sure? Okay. Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Stephanie. Um, I'm an MCV major, so I sort of almost don't belong here, but I do because awesomeness. And um, fun fact, uh, my nickname is Fish. Hi, Fish. Yay. That's Curtis. Yes. I yes. We live in the same dorm here. Really? Josh! Oh, <laughs> my name's Josh. <laughs> you kind of like spoiled it. I'm not, I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm Joshua. Um, very boring personality. Uh, <laughs> great, great <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Major's yeah. <laughs> a boring personality. Um, no, he's a great time. <laughs> the major <laughs> is a. Uh, Molecular cellular biology and computer science, and I want to get in like, like, a software business eventually. So. Yes. So that's the meeting. We'll see you here next week.